This is our Hidden Killers Half Year in Review with True Crime Today. A look back at some of the most compelling conversations about the biggest cases we're following for you right here over the last six months in first half of 2024. Here's another one of those conversations. This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Alec Murdaugh denied a new trial, at least from this round with Judge Toll, despite the fact that a juror, Juror Z, as they were named in the hearing, flat out said, yes, Becky said these things to me. Yes, Becky's statements to me influenced my decision of guilt. And even then, Judge Toll still said, nope, I think the verdict will stand. At least that's where it is right now until it goes to another appellate court. Joining me to discuss, Jennifer Coffindaffer, retired FBI special agent. Jennifer, were you surprised by what we saw in court the other day? I wasn't surprised, but I want to tell you why. I wasn't surprised when we saw the hearing that led up to this Mm -hmm. hearing. And when I saw Judge Toll completely narrow in what they had to show. In other words, there was going to be no extraneous information about Hill. Hill was not going to be on trial. Uh, It was really going to boil down to just what was said. And she added the caveat that it had to have been intended to, uh, you know, cause tampering, Mm -hmm. intended to tamper, not just a a thought that she said or, or, you know, in passing. When I saw that narrow focus, I thought, oh, my God, there's no way they're going to be able to prove that because you'd have to get into her mind. Yeah. Well, and, and how can you say that that I mean, it, the intent is there, then that's what's going to influence intent doesn't even matter uh, in reality if Becky Hill had that intent or not. Uh, if if it made the impact that it did, then it made the impact that it did. I, I kind of felt like going into this that Judge Toll had already made up their, uh, the, the, her mind of, um, you know, this is not going to go anywhere in my courtroom. And I do halfway wonder about did Judge Toll just not want to be the person to give Alec Murdaugh a new trial, knowing full well that, you know, if these arguments are to be made in an appellate court down the road, it may actually go somewhere. But they uh, Judge Toll didn't want to have uh, their name attached to this. Yeah, it is interesting. And again, it was really one juror. But as we all know, it only takes one juror to hang a hang a jury and and to not have a finding. So that one juror is quite important. I think that obviously they're going to continue to appeal this uh, clear up to the highest court. And I do think, though, Tony, some of this just is a matter of law and of precedent. And uh, interestingly, I think this case is sort of making some precedent. At yeah. least Judge Toll said that, right? She said she'd never had a case where it happens, you know, months after the verdict's been uh, turned in. It, it always is something that's going on during trial. So she said she found herself in uh, new waters. And I think she laid the groundwork and the precedent, but she certainly used other cases mm-hmm. to say, listen, they have to have purposely been trying to derail the jury it's a weird precedent to set i mean you go into a room and and you say things that you're not supposed to say but whether you realize you're going to have an impact or not if they have an impact they have an impact that that just seems to be a very uh undefinitive precedent uh, to be setting And, and and it also does seem to set a precedent here too of Look, I guess the clerk of court, uh, wittingly or unwittingly, can say things in a South Carolina courtroom or with a jury, and it may have influence. It may not. It doesn't really make a difference either way because we're not going to consider that to be influence. Uh, it's a weird gray area that, that doesn't seem to have been settled at all in that hearing the other day. Yeah. And, you know, Judge Toll, because it really came down to, in a sense, that he said she said a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you had basically 12 people against one. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the other jurors, you know, definitely did not 
side with the one juror that said she was influenced and she heard these things. And, and of course Hill said she didn't say them at all. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought it was interesting that judge toll really, um, didn't find her necessarily to be that credible. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know if you remember, but you know, she did question her because of that, uh, literary license, right. Yeah. (laughs) That, uh, Hill used really when she com- was plagiarized yeah. part of her book. Um, so anyway, I, I think that it's going to be interesting as it goes up to the next level to see if they get a hearing and to see if it could possibly overturn. I think it's a slim possibility, uh, but I think it's a possibility. Is there any investigative work going on right now uh behind the scenes or would there be any sort of investigative work going on behind the scenes uh about influence with that juror z Uh, and i'm not suggesting any sort of improprieties here but uh it is rather odd that 11 of the other jurors said no this did not happen i never was influenced by becky and i don't recall her ever stating anything uh to this uh to this point, but this one certainly does. Um, and, and certainly says it, it affected, uh, her decision. Um, it, it does make you wonder a little bit, just knowing the track record of Alec Murdoch and the lengths that he will go to, to, uh, cover up uh, his own indiscretions and such. Could there be some sort of influence going on here to have one state that yes, Becky did in fact do this again. I, it's just speculation. I know nothing about this juror. Um, but it just does seem a bit curious. It does seem curious. And I believe Judge Toll thought it seemed curious. Um, it's unusual to have everyone say one thing and one say another. Um, but I think they'll let the sleeping dog lie. I don't really think that they're going to ramp up an investigation on this juror where I could see that could happen is if anything's reversed. But Mm -hmm. again, I think it's so slim of a chance uh, because the judge who, oh my gosh, her resume was unbelievable when I was looking at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, she just has so much experience. And so I think certainly her interpretation of the law for uh, an appellate court to overturn that is really going to take a lot. And her belief is that there was no nefarious uh, uh, you know, she didn't say anything nefariously, uh, if she said anything at all. So I think it's going to stand. What does it matter though? Back to that again. What does it matter if it was nefarious or not? If it was, if, if something was said? Well, I think the big problem is again, it's 11 to one that anything yeah. was said. So now we not only have to believe something was said, but we have to believe this juror was truly influenced. So Now we're looking at just completely believing this juror over 12 other people. And I think that's where the the rubber met the road in a way with Judge Toll and her decision. Do you think as this inevitably goes down the appellate process and there's there's many other courts that can hear this, Alec, uh, by many accounts, there's at least three more courts down the road before someone's going to say, "Okay, enough. Um, do you think he's going to get another trial? Uh, do you think one of these other courts is going to take this up and go, yeah, look, um, this was said. Uh, the juror has flat out said that this affected their decision. Do you think it will work at some point in time if they, they keep chipping away at this? Well, if I were the defense, I'd certainly keep chipping away. Um, I, I will, I would find it, unusual. I think that there is a chance, let, let's let say this, I give it a 10% chance that it could possibly work in terms of overturning this decision by Judge Toll. But based on her experience, based on the 12 to 1 uh, information and facts that you have available, uh, and based on the fact of the limited scope that Toll determined based on her understanding of the law, I just don't know how it could be overturned, but I'll give it a 10% chance. You you never know uh, what these appellate courts will do. Want to listen ad-free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? 
Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on true crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.